This anime opens showing a girl holding a knife. I don't know what actually happened, but a moment after the woman channeled electrical energy into her dagger, the woman called the man in front of her the name Tomokui Kanata. And it is clear that in this position Kanata, who can no longer do anything, can only surrender to the fate that awaits him. But suddenly Kanata experienced reincarnation, and when he opened his eyes he was surprised to be still alive. In front of him he saw an old grandfather who woke him up. Kanata, who saw the grandfather, was very surprised, because the grandfather had green skin. Then after that the old grandfather gave Kanata's name Go Buru. On the second day, when Goburu woke up from his sleep, he was surprised because he was surrounded by green-skinned babies, and Goburu realized that he was born as one of the goblins without powers. On the third day, Goburu is now an adult and believes that goblins are a fast-growing species. Goburo was very grateful and said in his heart, What is his place like? What is he like now? The most important thing right now is his second life and he will make good use of his life. On the fourth day, the goblins gathered and the old man gave food to all of them. The old grandfather then explained that this food was the last meal for all of them. And the old grandfather said that tomorrow they would have to find their own food. After that, Goburo came out of the cave for the first time and he looked up at the sky and the sun. There were even some strange birds scattered around, and there were some strange plants that he had never seen before. Not long after, one of the goblins approached him behind him. The goblin was named Gobkichi. After getting to know each other, Goburu and Gobkichi hunt together for the first time. After successfully getting the horned rabbit, Goburo then broke its horn and suddenly a notification appeared in his head. The notification told him that he had obtained the horns of a rabbit, and Goburu, who received the notification, did not understand this. After that, the two of them ate the horned rabbit's meat. The next day, the two of them went into the forest to hunt again. But a strange thing happened again. After eating the prey, he now gained the ability to escape. After that, Goburu realized that it was all an absorption ability. That ability was an ability he had in his previous life, an ability that only espers possessed. This ability can eat iron, gold, or poison. He can eat them all and will get the ability. But unfortunately, the abilities he gained in his previous life have been erased. In the evening, a goblin woman came, named Gabanai, who praised the two of them for successfully eating the horned rabbit. Then Goburu invited Gabai to join in the hunt. Gabi who heard this was very happy and agreed to the invitation. The next day, when they wanted to go hunting, it suddenly started raining so they couldn't enter the forest to hunt. When Goburu made a weapon, the old grandfather came over to Goburu. The old grandfather's name was Gabji and explained that he was the one who brought Goburu into this world. The old grandfather was also the head of the cave. Gabji's grandfather said that with this Goburu would definitely be able to raise his level easily. These words made Goburu confused about what he was hearing. Gabji's grandfather then told him that by placing his finger on his head, he could find out a person's level. Goburo then did that, and suddenly it occurred to him that he was now at level 86, and with a certain level Goburo could evolve into a creature of a higher level. On the eighth day, Gabi was finally able to join the hunt together. After successfully getting their prey, as usual they immediately eat it and Goburo gets several abilities. <laughs> At night when Goburo was fast asleep, it suddenly occurred to him that Goburo had now reached a certain level, and then another notification appeared telling him that the evolution had been successfully completed. When the choice notification appears, Goburo selects yes. The next day when he woke up from his sleep, he was surprised because he had evolved. Where now his body is like in the past, at the same time the Gobkichi has evolved too. To praise their new abilities, the two of them then went to hunt the wolf beast. After successfully defeating the wolves, Goburo again gained several new abilities. At that time, Goburo woke up Gobji and told him the incident of their human captive who had died after drinking poison. In order to honor those who have died, the Goburu burns the human captive so that the dead will rest in peace in nature. On the 26th day, Gobi was seen carrying out training with other goblins. In the middle of practice, Goburu summarized what he had gone through previously. He realized that if the goblins continued to eat a lot of monsters, 
they would gain all the power from those monsters. Not long after, several goblin robbers were seen coming, and were greeted by Goburo with his two swords. Seeing this, Gobji stopped him and explained that they were a team of migrants who were looking for food supplies for them. In other words, they are the current generation of Goburo parents. Long story short, after they collected the cargo they were carrying, it was seen that there were several human captive girls and it was considered a quality product for all of them. Gobji who saw this was very happy to get some girls after losing the human captives before. Even though they planted human seeds, somehow the ones born were always the goblin race. When Goburo asked the goblin robbers to guard the girl captives, the hug leader immediately stopped him. The leader was named Hobkin, then he immediately grabbed Goburo's clothes and immediately shouted at him. When things got heated, luckily there were two women who stopped him. He is Hobsado the swordsman and Hobsai the magician. The two of them then give advice to Goburo and Hobkin to fight each other, and if they win he will become the keeper of the female captive and will become the leader of the village. However, they were both prohibited from using weapons when fighting, and they both finally agreed to this rule. Long story short, Goburo won the fight in a very short time. He used a spider's web after eating the flesh of a demon spider. Everyone who saw it was very surprised by Goburo's abilities. Because Goburo had won the battle, the old generation had to recognize Goburo as the new village leader. <coughs> After the fight was over, Goburo took the female captives to a storage warehouse. He also told them that no goblin would touch them all. The girls were very surprised that Goburo would not harm them all. Goburo even promised to return them all to their respective places. Then the red-haired girl, Rubelia, asked what Goburo wanted in return. At that time, Goburo answered that he wanted knowledge from humans. In the afternoon, Goburo was seen punishing two older generation goblins because they dared to disobey his orders. As their grudges escalated, the older generation of goblins broke the Goburo's rules to touch the girl captives. But just when they wanted to give vent to their lust, Goburo suddenly came and slaughtered all the goblins who refused his orders. Not long after, Gobkichi and the others came. Goburo immediately ordered Gobkichi to take Hoban out, as well as his subordinates and summoned the goblin raiders to gather outside. That's how Goburo controlled the situation, as well as showing off his power and strength from the goblins. Some of Hobkin's subordinates were still alive even though they were dying, unlike Hobkin who had to die the next morning. Long story short, you can see the gob which has now evolved into a strong goblin like Guburo and the others. After that Goburo divided the tasks into several divisions, the weapons division led by Gobkichi, the arrow division led by Gobmi, the sword division led by Habsado, the magic expert division which had no one yet led by Habsai, and the simple task division led by Gobi. After giving orders to each division to train their subordinates, Goburo entered the forest to look for monsters to increase his strength. Long story short, Goburo entered the northern forest, even though there was a prohibition against entering the forest, because in the forest there is a forest ruler named the Red Bear. Unfortunately, after a few seconds Goburo entered the forest, he immediately met the forest ruler, the Red Bear. After the magic skill of the Goburo was sacrificed with one hand, the red bear looked angry when facing the Goburo. The claws of a red bear can even tear apart a super thick body, clearly making the Goburo continue to dodge and hope that it doesn't get hit by the claws. Goburo then launched his spider thread skill to stop its movement. But unfortunately, the red bear managed to free itself and let out a fire that could heat up the forest area. Long story short, after burning the area around him, Goburo appears to challenge him again after healing his burns. Unfortunately, when Goburo managed to block the burst of fire from the Red Bear using his water protection skill, unfortunately he didn't take into account whether the regional ruler in front of him would immediately die or not after he stuck his sword right into its throat. Goburo was left dying after being hit by a Maru attack from the Red Bear. When both of them were dying, Goburo decided to attack him in order to eat the flesh of a very overpowered bear monster. おい。行くぜ。あ、ハゲを掘ろう。外は硬くても。
After a fierce fight with the Red Bear, Gobaro finally succeeded in defeating the ruler of the Red Bear region, even though he was in a dying condition and one of his hands had been cut off. Then at the same time, Gobaro ate the Red Bear's meat before he became unconscious. Then the system notifies Gobaru that he has met the requirements to evolve into a warrior species of goblin. In the morning, when Gobaru woke up he was surprised to find he had evolved again. Gobaru's return to the village made the goblins panic, because they thought that it was ordinary goblin predators who had come. However, of the ordinary goblins there, only Gobu knew that it was an evolved Gobaru. This is the end of Re-Monster Episode 1 and 2. Thank you very much for staying on this channel and watching our videos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep you up to date with our latest content. See you in the next video. This is my recap of the third and fourth parts of the Re-Monster anime. You can watch the previous parts with the link in the description below at the end of the last episode. The anime starts when Goburo enters the cave, Everyone inside is shocked to see Goburo's very different changes. Currently, Goburo has evolved into an ogre. Even one month after being born, he managed to defeat the ruler of the northern forest, namely the Red Bear. On the 36th day in the morning, after doing training the goblins were seriously injured. After he delivered an attack using little force, even the armor used by Gobkichi was almost destroyed. Therefore, they had no choice but to stop the training. After treating one of the goblins who was injured as a result of the attack, on the 37th day at noon, when everyone had done a little exercise and was resting, suddenly Gob came shouting for help from Goburo. It turned out that Gob was carrying a woman from the village who was seriously injured, even her whole body was covered in blood. While Goburo was administering first aid, Gobi explained that when he was digging in the ground it turned out he was already there. After recovering from her injuries the woman introduced herself as Returner, she explained that she had been attacked by several humans. Then Goburo looked at Returner's forehead and there was a jewel, he explained that the jewel was a high-level material, and if the jewel was sold it would probably be worth up to 1 billion gold, and that might also cause human race adventurers to target it. Then Returner prostrated himself in front of the Goburo and asked for help to get rid of the human adventurers. He also explained that his life was very short, that's why he wanted to borrow the Goburo's power to get rid of the human adventurers. <laughs> Goburo assumes that in ancient times the creator of the Returner probably managed their treasures, and when the human race attacked him the core of the Returner would ignite, causing his lifespan to be short. Then the Returner explained that inside the treasure there was a legendary item that Velvet had collected in her lifetime. The Returner told them all that the creator really hated the human race. The creator didn't want their treasure to fall into human hands. He also explained that his master would definitely give the legendary item to Goburo, because he was sure that his master would definitely give him all the treasure. Hearing the Returner's explanation, Goburo immediately agreed and ordered the goblins to go to the treasure room that the Returner had mentioned. Goburo explained that he would only chase away the humans and he would try his best to persuade them all, but if Goburo failed he would use a little violence. Long story short, they went to a hole that had been dug by Gobe and walked straight to Velvet's treasure room. The first thing Goburo will do is try to persuade them all, and he asks Gobkichi to hide with the others. That's why Goburo himself will meet the adventurers. After Goburo met the adventurers, suddenly one of them attacked Goburo. But the attack was easily read by Goburo. Immediately Goburo said with stupid people, Don't you know that this is someone's place, and you want to kill the owner of this place? You even want to take other people's treasures without saying anything to the owner, right? That's what is called robbery and murder. Because he was annoyed with Goburo, one of the human races attacked Goburo. As a result of this incident, Goburo was very angry, and he attacked the adventurer along with the other goblins. After successfully defeating them all, Goburo took the adventurer's items, then ate them and gained various abilities. After that, they all headed to the deepest place where all the treasures were kept. At that moment, the Returner was very happy because he had been helped by Goburo and then disappeared in front of Goburo. Then a gem from the Returner fell into Goburo's hands, and Goburo swallowed the gem and gained a new ability. He then decided to burn the Velver, but a legendary level artifact fell and Goburo used it on his left hand. After using it, Goburo gained various powers, and now his left hand has returned to how it was before. On the 39th day after completing the mission, Goburo gave 10 weapons to the Hobgoblins. Goburo himself took three legendary class items, including the Kaziklube Vermilion Spear. 
Goburo then explained the levels of an item, starting from inferiority to phantasm, while the item that Goburo took, which was just below phantasm, was believed to be able to rule a country. On the 41st day, Goburo, who was hunting in the forest, found a very beautiful giant tree, illuminated by sunlight which made the tree even more beautiful. After seeing that the tree came from a species of dryads, it was believed they could influence men of other races as their source of nutrition. With their cute faces and smooth bodies, dryads are able to deceive men. Long story short, a woman from the dryads approached Goburo and teased him. Even though Goburo had tried to resist the temptation, unfortunately Goburo's mentality was not strong enough to resist it. However, instead of becoming nutrition for the dryads, Goburo actually got a new ability called the Dryad's Blessing. <laughs> On the 42nd day, Hobsei was seen who was very happy because he had a magic using Hobgoblin member. Long story short, throughout Goburu's day with the girls, he was shunned and even received angry looks from all of them. Then Goburu asked Spinal what was going on, after which Spinal explained that Goburu's behavior in playing with the Dryads had been known to them. Long story short, on the 44th day, Goburu felt that his abilities had increased after becoming an ogre. Goburo could even feel the signs of creatures that detected that they were coming. Not long after, the elves arrived rudely. The Goburo race, namely the goblin, is subordinate to the elf race, where the goblin race must submit to the elf race. Goburo knew that the elves and humans would fight, so they asked Goburo for help. Gobji's grandfather strongly agreed, but in contrast to Goburo who refused. The leader of the elf nation who heard that immediately wanted to attack Goburo, but Goburo immediately released his strength to teach them a lesson. Goburo then says that if they want to live, they have to let the archers retreat. While frightened, the leader of the elf nation asked his subordinates to follow Goburo's words. Then Goburo took out a legendary spear and said that he didn't want to help him, but he also lived in this forest, and if humans wanted to destroy him, then he wanted to help him. Instantly, Goburo used his legendary spear as he stuck it into the ground and created endless spear shadows. Seeing this, they immediately left the place in fear. In the morning, Goburo hunts gray slime in the forest and eats it. Instantly Goburo gets a new power, namely auto-replication. This ability just by dripping his blood instantly turns into a baby Goburo. But the baby Goburo was very small, not only that he could see himself and their senses were connected. Goburo had a brilliant idea. He asked Gobmi and the others to make clothes, which were made with Goburo's blood, so that if they were in a dangerous situation, Goburo could know. On the 47th day the elves returned, Goburo said that they all did not learn from their mistakes. When these elves wanted to attack, Goburo immediately released his power so that because of that power they couldn't move, and he also released the power of the spider web to catch them all. On the 48th day, Gobkichi was seen fighting a monster in a forest. After defeating him, Gobkichi has reached level 100 which means he can evolve to the next stage. The next morning, the hobgoblins were shocked because the Gobkichi had evolved. Gobkichi has just evolved to the special variant stage where the skin of the Gobkichi is demigod of flame skin which is very hard. Gobkichi doesn't want to compete with Goburo but he doesn't want to be left behind by Goburo's changes. Then Gobkichi invited Goburo to fight together, which Goburo agreed to. During the fight they both attack each other, but Goburo quickly defeats Gobkichi. He is the strongest because he has several advantages in fighting. From this fight it was proven that Gobkichi had become his rival. During the break after they fought, Goburo suddenly dreamed and saw a shadowy figure who said sorry and he wanted to ask for help and give something. Then Gobi invites Goburo to show something and it turns out that the hobgoblins have evolved because Gobkichi motivated them all. Furthermore, Hobsi had evolved when he woke up in the morning, and it seemed like Hobsi had grown into a family of lords. Usually the lord's family didn't have such a mark, and this mark turned out to be almost similar to the Goburo mark. After that, they all tested their new abilities and the results made Goburo very surprised, and it was very likely that Hobsi would evolve into a spell lord later, and Goburo gave Hobsi new clothes and a magic wand.
いや本当に十分です手が使っても大丈夫ですよランクアップで正式なスペル新しい武装です慣れちゃったサトちゃんもランクアップ率が異常にこれであることには間違いないだ On the 53rd day, while searching in a forest, Goburo saw a human being killed by someone He thought that humans had unique abilities, and when Goburo killed him, he got the abilities of that human figure. At night, Spinal shows the results of her discovery to Goburo. When Goburo tried it, he thought it was sake, and this made Goburo happy with the discovery. On the 57th day, it was seen that Gobi had succeeded in defeating the unicorn beast. After that, Goburo tried the monster timer's abilities on the unicorn, and as a result, the animal became their first tame animal. And at that time, they also got other animals, such as black wolves, which now serve as guardians for women from the human race. On the 59th day, something very surprising happened to Goburu, where Rebellia, who thought she was a novice knight, has now evolved into a formidable knight. When Goburu ate some meat, suddenly Rebellia asked for that meat too. When she ate the meat, Rebellia suddenly got a job, namely Noir Soldaf. Rebellia is required to eat monster meat, otherwise she will die, but if she succeeds, she will experience a tremendous increase in strength. At night, Goburu found out that the kobold race was being chased by something. When Goburo wanted to find out who was chasing him, he couldn't see him because at that time the sky was dark, even though he had used his detection ability. Because of this, they were all ready to confront him, and it turned out that what was chasing them was a skull monster made by magic. After defeating the monsters and successfully saving the kobold race, they all thanked the Goburo while prostrating themselves before him. Goburo then told them all to mention the wound first, after which they would talk about what had happened. This is the end of Re Monster episode 3 and 4. Thank you very much for staying on this channel and watching our videos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep you up to date with our latest content. See you in the next video.